Hey guys, I don't know if you can hear me, but um, uh, this is Denny from Microsoft side. I think Yahweh had sent an email uh, sharing kind of, um, you know, kind of giving it up to date. And I know, uh, Jimmy, you sent some information. So this is kind of me catching up to a lot of the discussion and the, the thought process and the work that you've done. So with uh, Alibaba, at least. So I don't know if you you guys had an agenda or any thoughts today but i would be interested in kind of getting a rough idea on what what y'all are working at what you're looking at today um yeah uh, this is a jimmy here so i i probably say a couple of things uh danny so uh Basically, uh, as I mentioned in the email, mm -hmm. we, uh, Ali and the S-Link team has uh, contributed uh, uh, this uh, a working system, uh, Sonic-based. Uh, so we finished uh, their, they finished their introduction and the design and the, uh, presentation. So now we are sort of going to second round to look at uh, each uh, component as well as the architecture uh, to to review the existing implementation, then uh, get some feedback from the team to see how and where we we can improve. So that is the high level. So specific at 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 this at this point. We want to kind of finish two things. One is the high, uh, it uh, seems like every uh, Sonic sub project always need to have uh, HLD get approved, endorsed by the larger community. Oh. Uh, th yeah, so that's what oh, okay. we are working Yeah, that is what we are working on this one oh. thing. Second is the similar to switching uh, uh, area there's there's in the switching area there's a side interface right that's the sort of key of our sonic uh, to which allow mm -hmm. the vendor specific information captured uh, for the side implementation then uh, all yeah. the other stuff they are common stuff so we are trying to do the same thing uh to yeah. define or call the otai uh, interface that will be the second right. thing we, we are working on yeah and in a way the side yeah in a way the challenging thing about optical, there's so many more um, potential components and based upon the system and things you've designed, right? What so mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I understand there's some thought process to make it mm -hmm. modular, but I'll just add you kind of, you know, I've been kind of, kind of catching up to this. I can just add my two cents. I think, you know, the the Alibaba team did tremendous work getting this up and running and working for them right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you had the opportunity to do it basically to to build what you wanted for what you needed right and then went down the path of hey how do we get this uh open source right so mm -hmm. i i don't want to be in a place where you know both of our companies are dictating how each other should do work yeah. right the the beauty mm -hmm. of it is i think finding uh, what part of it we can reuse each other's work so the minimal layer in which the base building blocks that we can build uh, what we want, right? Where we have flexibility. So mm -hmm. I would love it if it was like, hey, like here's are the containers and here's are the components that um, you can reuse or build your own image or your own uh, desired system from, but it's optional ultimately, right? Mm -hmm. Optional, uh, you mean, because what what do you mean option? Um, what I mean is that mm. you don't want to be stuck uh, when you're working on a piece of hardware, you're doing something in the future. You don't, you know, you don't want to be stuck in a position where mm. we have to get something approved by a board to do what's going to be good for um, your your customers. Or so if like if there's a section of the design that mm. no longer makes sense, right? Mm. Or it's not mm. serving value, mm. that, that's going to be a challenge, right? Mm, 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 mm. Exactly. Yeah. So that's a good point. So so we, I mean, yeah. 
So uh, once, I mean, that's sort of the challenge here. Yeah. One way we want to sign kind of uh, mergeable with the existing coder base, right? You don't want to run off your own track. Then, I mean, totally. So <laughs> you, because Sonic is uh, uh, evolving so fast, you have so many check-ins every day. So you, you have your own copy, then you pretty much obsolete the very soon. Right, that's the thing we want. On the other side, you don't want to like everything uh, get approved by larger community. Then it will slow down tremendously our work. So that's that's sort of the balance we need to yeah. look at. Yeah. Yeah, like we're thinking, hey, what if we want to rewrite some of these mm -hmm. components in, for example, Rust, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, that'll be, for example, a challenge. Um, but I think if we can find like the, if we if we had a list of let's say the containers or the uh, the user space modules that would that we believe will forever be ubiquitous, mm -hmm. and then you know we start with the ones that we think will be definitely ubiquitous, and then we go into the ones where we might diverge, and we mm -hmm. focus on aligning at the parts that will be ubiquitous, mm -hmm. right? And then you yeah. say, hey, you might diverge below this layer, mm. like let's say at the some of the driver layer. Yeah, at least yes, we're yes. designed for that. Um, exactly. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So ideally, we are so sort of kind of try to uh, reuse and uh, keep the uh, so for example the infrastructure, right? You don't want to have different, but the, the content, the business and logic certainly. Uh, optical network is different from the packet switching. So that part can be well kind of uh, separated. So yeah, uh, that, yeah, that's a general thought. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like the Psi, you know, is I know it's like typically just uh, an ASIC. A lot of it's like a, a, a ASIC type Stuff, SDK, yeah, right? Yeah. But yeah. here it can be many different things. Mm -hmm. So. So I don't know what the uh, uh, way 10, what, what is your thoughts for, for today's meeting? I saw you uploaded a, a modified uh, old high uh, spec. So what, what, so sort of what, what to, how, how do we moving forward for, for that? Uh, can you hear? Can yeah. I, can hear yes, yes. So in my thought, um, I think firstly we need a, uh, confirm the definition of the old tie. Mm. Uh, even though there is uh, some uh, improvement such as the definition where we use some structures, I think these are telling uh, improvement. Uh, we don't need to address at this stage. Uh, I think if the, the architecture or the components naming or the features and the community agree with these definitions, then I think we are ready to uh, uh, let the, the the Sonic team to review this definition, mm -hmm. and uh, then we submit our code. Then mm -hmm. we can prove this definition uh, later or in the future. So I think that's the the first stage. Mm -hmm. then, then I think uh, the team uh, should better uh, uh, this. Uh, make a decision on the high level design because right now there are three options. I think we should better um, make a decision as quickly as possible. Then, uh, then we uh, distinguish uh, which part we need to uh, to work because there is already an implementation in the uh, from Alibaba and Acelink. Yeah. So then. If we design the high level design, then we need to distinguish which part we need to modify. And then we, we maybe we need volunteers to test and fix or modify the source code and then make it work. And then we can uh, add uh, parallelly, we, we can at, at that time we can discuss with the, uh, with the, the, the Sonic, Sonic team. Because if we wanna merge this, uh, if we use option working two, 
because we want to reuse this uh, Sonic uh, uh, SWSS or SyncD, we reuse these containers, then I think we'd better uh, discuss with the, the Sonic team first, because uh, uh, because we, we need to change the source code, maybe uh, we need to uh, tell them which part we will change and what's the impact to their team and uh, get some feedbacks, then... Yeah, could, yeah. you know, I like what you said, right? It's like, you know, I think the challenge is saying, you know, you, you already have done tremendous work and you have this using, right, uh, in production. Now you're having a bunch of new people come in and who want to use it. Is there a way for us to go through and say, um, like what part of it, for example, um, we can, uh, like definitely reuse, right? As in like what part of it would be the base uh, building blocks of the OS? Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, cause like, I just, you know, I've seen sometimes challenges with where, uh, you know, we have this fully laid out vision of all of the components and everything we expect to use and then people start diverging because it doesn't meet it. But if we say, hey, like, can we, uh, can we like line up on, for example, the, let's say like the, the, the Redis database or some of the, uh, um, you know, common libraries um, and things like that. Yeah, so, I, yeah, so I, I think that's what we're, um, I think that's kind of a baseline anyways, right? Um, we are reusing all the infra pieces from existing Sonic, right? We're not, we're not redefining anything there, right? Even the LE reference implementation, right? Still uses Redis as the, uh, yeah, the yeah. you know, the central core for everything, right? Everybody's hanging off of Redis, right? The, really, the question <laughs> from an architectural perspective is around, um, you know, um, from, you know, regular Sonic, right, we have the uh, um, uh, the switching service, right, and the, and the SyncD, right, those are the kind of the two major components, right, that drive everything. Um, so the major kind of discussion point that's happened in the last few weeks, right, is do we create our own equivalent, uh, I think we've been call, call, uh, calling it uh, OLS, SyncD, and uh, OLSS, um, do we create our own containers, right, to do optical functions, right, separate from what current Sonic offers in terms of SWSS inside? Okay. Right? When you say functions, are we talking about just basically dr dr driving the ex desired configuration? Yeah, yeah. To... I mean, so, <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. So basically, the layers are on layer one functions, right? Um, uh, that that this team is really responsible for, right? So the transponder function and the the optical. Um, yeah, but I'm system just, function. Right, but I'm thinking more, is it like primitive things such as like, hey, like set the game or yeah, start exactly. the device? Yeah, or I mean, is it things like, no, I'm going to have like a logic of my, um, you know, gain equalization? No, so, right. so as okay. it stands right now, right, it, it's really built off of the, um, the open config uh, uh, models, right? Mm hmm um, so it's really those primitive functions, right? Set the gain, you know, set the, you know, the, 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 the you know, degree threshold, set laser on off, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's really, but, okay. It's really that that's currently there, right? Okay, great. So, but even that, right? Like what you discard, laser on off. Okay, which laser? Well, our, our system has this laser. Your system doesn't have this laser. Why'd you do it? Like, like this, right? Um, is there a way to make it, a guideline yeah the way i think you would really need to do that is through the process of discovery right um as you mentioned right every piece of every transponder every every optical uh device that you have might have different you know form and it function will. right it, it will, it will have, have different, different form yeah. and function right so really i think what you have to build is the ability to discover what hardware you have build your model around that right and at least this is my view, right? Build your mm -hmm. model around that and then use these primitive functions to drive those capabilities, taking into account the, 
you know, a number of, uh, you know, feeds and speeds, you know, that, that you're dealing with, right? Um, yeah, when you and, say and discover, it, are you mean like there's going to be a communicate, like a way these layers are going to communicate and expand? Yeah, so the way I, I again, in my mind, right, you know, the OTI API that Jimmy was referencing, right? Which is basically your interface to the hardware, right? Which is the equivalent of the SI in regular Sonic, right? Uh, that OTI API could uh, should support uh, a discovery uh, mechanism that so you can actually detect based on the hardware and the implementation of the hardware that's plugged in what you're actually dealing with, right? So, so All so of these cards will have, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, either layer one or layer zero functions, yeah. even layer zero, you know, it could be a WSS, it could be an amplifier, right? It could be OCM, right? It could be a whole bunch of things, right? Um, and the number of ports it has could be different from each vendor, right? Um, from vendor to vendor. So for each of those, right, you have to really discover what, you know, what so, you're dealing with, right? So I know, I, know, uh, I, have a, I have a thought here. So, so we are talking about basically the vendor specific stuff now. So no, that not. Is I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you're saying, I'm saying, I'm saying like, how do we discover and things like that, right? It will be different for different transponders and things like what our vendors are using is what you're saying, right? Yeah, I'm saying I have that, similar... is, that is, that is actually independent of this discussion, I would say, because the OTI layer should be taking care of the whole thing, right? What is underneath this hardware agnostic? We should not worry about what is there underneath. It can be XYZ, it can be Alibaba, it can be Infinera, it can be anything. So the OTI has to take care of in such a manner that any hardware should be able to plug in because they have been, they're going to use the OTI. So yeah, but, but that's the point. That? That's the point, Harish, which is that yeah, you're not exposing which chip vendor you're using or Correct. which technology you're using to implement no, no. things. Or right? what you're exposing is the logical functions of the piece of hardware that you're you're discovering. Correct. Right. Correct. So, so that yeah, has but, to be exposed through the OTI API. Correct. Right. So that you can uh, feed that into your OLSS and um, you know, absolutely OLSing D, right, to basically yeah, drive correct. the business business functions of the piece of hardware. That's correct. That you you have currently plugged in, right? I'm not I'm not yes, talking correct. about expo exposing hardware specifics. Right? We should never do that over OTI. Right? Correct. 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 Right. Um, so so, but but that should be independent, right? I mean, I I, I yeah yeah that, yeah that that's that's independent. The, the reason uh -huh. I brought that up is because uh -huh. uh, um, I'm sorry, is your name Dan? I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name when you. Started. Oh, Denny. Denny, 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 sorry. Denny. Uh, so Denny. Denny brought up the question of what is the level of control, right, in the current APIs, right? Okay, okay. And, okay. and the level of controls right now that we have is pure open config, right? It, if, yeah, you really, yeah. if you really think about OLSS in its current form, it's really just a open config translator into Redis for the most part, right? Right, yeah, right, correct. But so the, the, the one additional part on top of it is, right, we have to, when we design it up, we have to keep in mind because we are designing right from the scratch right, for all these things. You have to make sure that it addresses uh, uh, the different uh, extensions as well for features and things like that, right? So that there is, we don't have to go and uh, rework on all these things, right? So that's one thing we need to keep in mind. Right? Yeah, so th so that that's a kind of a, uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about is, okay. um, and I think, uh, I think Danny kind of alluded to this as well, which is, you know, what do we consider a base capability yeah. of an OTN device, right? Yeah. And, and this kind of comes into the whole OTI uh, specification that uh, you know, Wei Tang was talking about as well. And I think we kind of alluded to this in the, at the end of the last meeting. Uh -huh. We didn't really get to discuss this uh, further, which right. is we really need to take this API and kind of determine what is mandatory, right. what is optional, what is optional right? right? And, and then even furthermore, what is custom? Right, because mm -hmm. for, yeah. for any yeah. given vendor, that you know, in addition to the you know the mandatory and optional, there could be some, there, there, there could be some yeah. custom things, right? That's that, right. And, and and how do you plug in all of these things into a generic right. OLSS, right? Mm -hmm. And o, and and um, you know and uh, OLS Sync D, right? Those are the names we're using right now, right? How do we plug all of these things in when we have potentially very disparate hardware, right? That we're dealing with underneath. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so yeah. that that yeah. is the challenge that I'm I'm kind I of. I think. Grappling. Yeah. I'm, this is well put. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I think I think in my opinion, right. as long as we define the APIs clearly with the base, what is required, plus what are the features which needs to be addressed, and the for the for the for the customization for uh, features of uh, specific to vendors as well, right? 
if the apis are defined clearly then it it should it should not be an issue with respect to either the application side of oss uh, container or on the side of uh, singd which is uh, optical transport uh, uh, singd right which are it's a separate entity right to handle that it should be easier for us to 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 address all those things I yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i, I agree, agree what i'm hearing is like you know i think once you when when we try to create hey like here's a section for all the vendors here's a section of what you i feel like it could get pretty complicated pretty fast and my intuition tells me can we have a bare bone skeleton where we you know some of it you're going to need regardless mm -hmm. of the vendor requirements or what mm -hmm. different vendors want to do there's going to be a base level skeleton uh bare bones that we would all benefit from let's do all the easy stuff in a way right where we know we will all agree on yeah that is a very good point danny so the approach we we are kind of debating right now is, is like a two approach one is we start with a minimum set right so yeah. the other man that i mean practically even we uh, make this open source into the Sonic community. Uh, practically, each vendor will always have a branch so they can yeah. extend what they want to, right? Instead of we like uh, try to put a superset of that, that yes. will be kind of more complicated. So really I, complicated, yeah, 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 really complicated. So I will prefer like we start with a core of the features, right? Then then we yeah. can even extend that by ourselves or whoever use that code base. Yeah. It's like a so, free. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I, I, I agree, Jimmy. But but mm. what I think what me and Anup are alluding to is not mm. like in the in the beginning itself, just um, mm -hmm. have a structure or a schema or whatever we are talking about, right? In a, in a way that it accommodates all these things. No, that's not what we are saying. Okay. What we are saying is when we when we design something, we have to make sure that we need to keep in mind all these things so that it is extensible, right? Not that we don't we don't want to do reinvent the wheel or do Agreed. something uh, something, right? So that's what we are just saying, right? That's what our thought process. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think so. You would have this. Is what I think. What Jimmy was saying too, right? There would be a base level that you could mm -hmm. build on top of. Then you would have your own branch mm -hmm. where you could do your own uh, specific mm -hmm. things. Um, but at least the part of it that we all share is the the part that the common, the common part that we right. all can benefit from together, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's some uniformity in terms of operation. And yeah, and uh, so there's so there's a couple of ways to look at that, right? And um, one way to look at that would be okay, let's all agree on a set of common functions, or uh, you know, every layer one or layer zero device we think we'll have. Another way to look at it is, I think, in terms of logical functions, right? Which is every piece of hardware is going to have fault management. Every piece of hardware is potentially going to have performance monitoring, right? So should the handling of those things, right? Should that be the thing that is common, right? Um, so should you have a common uh, fault management uh, handler? Should you have a common uh, PM handler, right? Because we all, I think we all generally agree we want more... OTN style PM, right? With traditional binning, you know, 15, 24, real time, right? All, all of those things, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, not, now not every vendor would support every one of those capabilities, but that's okay, mm -hmm. right? That's something you can discover what they support and what they don't, right? But do, should, should we look at it from that perspective, right? Which is, should we kind of work on putting in kind of these common utility things yeah, that yeah. Every, every vendor could take advantage of? And we are less worried about the specifics of OTI and, you know, am I turning okay. on this laser or that laser, right? Because that really is going to be, you know, uh, driven by the vendor. I'll, I'll give a good example, right? In the uh, prior, uh, the original um, OTI API, uh, and maybe Wei Tang has changed, so I apologize, I haven't looked at the latest one. One of the objects had, uh, give me the, uh, uh, here's the FPGA version and CPLD version. Right, it's a two, two read attributes. I think on the line card, if I'm not mistaken. But but guess what? You know, other vendors might have multiple FPGAs or multiple CPLDs, right? Um, on a given piece of hardware, right? So that one attribute is not going to be enough, right? So so I'm so that's what I'm saying. Like so, rather than us trying to kind of iron out all of those little details, maybe a, a different approach would be saying. Okay. Hey, we, we, we want to have all these common functions, right? That every, every piece of hardware, OTN hardware needs to have. Let's 
uh, you know, work around building libraries that support those capabilities, figure out what a reference deployment would look like from a container perspective. Um, for example, do we want to have separate containers for fault management and PM, for example, again, I'm just throwing ideas, right? Or do we want to group that all into this thing we're calling the, uh, uh, the uh, OLSS, OLSS, right? Uh, you know, so those kinds of decisions so think, we can make, right? I think uh, in general, contain, containerizing all processes, any unique process is a good practice. Um, but I would say that you said, I think there's two things you said. One, you said, what if vendors have different number of FPGAs? The other one is like, hey, what if we did our PMs? We like doing our PMs this way, but, you know, so I think those are separate problems. The mm -hmm. hardware differences, yes, like, we shouldn't try to do a really good job of allowing abstraction to support like 10 million, you know, let's not even try to solve that problem. Let's just cut the line at, at, at a certain layer and work on the bare bones. Now, as far as what you said with the PMs, yeah, I like the idea of saying like, hey, you might think that we have a really good way of doing PMs. We haven't all agreed on the best way to do PMs, but this is the way we do it. And this is our container, and that's going to be a module that you can uh, ex uh, extend your bare bones uh, core Sonic with, but it's optional, right? So right. that way you, you can have, I think, the benefit of maybe we'll all agree. Maybe everyone's like, yeah, like we would all do PM this way. Um, but I think some of that might, um, you know, might slightly differ. But I like the idea of saying like, hey, we have this, right? Like we're, you know, Molex or we're Infinera and we have this and we think it's good. We use this in Sonic. We're going to make this component an extensible part of the optional extendable part of the core, but it's not necessarily um, a hard requirement. Yeah, but then would it, would it not allude to having duplicate core? Because if Infinera is, as you said, right? If Infinera, we are coming up with a container, which basically does... Uh, yeah. Yeah. all your PMs and FMs, let's assume, right? And if um, Alibaba is already implemented in their code, then they have to basically now change it yeah. to R, right? I mean, so that's so that's where I think that, uh, in my opinion, as, as Anup alluded to, right? What are the common things, right? That we can put it as base so that we don't have to go and revisit these areas and we are like clean on, right? Everybody agrees on, which is common across all the vendors, right? We, we probably have to go do that first, I think. Okay. Um, so can that, we, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. So maybe what we need to do is make a list of yes, yes. all of the components right. and then rank them between, you know, saying like, yeah, these we are all on the same page of. These mm -hmm. maybe, maybe not. These definitely yeah. no, right? Correct. Correct. Um, yeah. And then so focus then on the ones easier. on top of the list. Yeah. yeah. Then it becomes easier for us to exactly. knock it down from the top. And then it, it, it is a gen. So then it becomes more generic with respect to Sonic infrastructure as well. So exactly. people who are coming in doesn't have to do reinvent the wheel and do the way they want it to do. They can just plug in. It'll be like a plug and play. They just use this container. They just do whatever configuration or schema they wanted to put in it. That's about it. Like uh, configuration, YAML file or whatever, right? So it should be that simple for anybody to uh, use the existing um, containers. Yeah. Hey, hey. Uh, so, Phil, I, I wanna I wanna come back to to this uh, lie definition. Uh, I think Tim raised uh, some good points. So I wanna uh, clarify that. So in 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 OTI definition right now, it support uh, plugging. I think because uh, we defined uh, different kinds of uh, optical components. But you know, for a transponder, we don't have VOA or OLP something like that. So these uh, sub components is, uh, is optional and all the attributes are optional too. So for example, if, uh, if vendor A doesn't support the FAPGA, then you just uh, retain not support for this attribute. Or in the OISS, you don't initialize some components which is a lot uh, support on your hardware. So I think right now the, uh, the OTI definition uh, uh, can definitely support different uh, kinds of hardware. So uh, come back to the, the PM or LAM. I think these are, uh, I think we'd better um, define different uh, containers in the user space in the application layer. 
So I think the, the key point is that uh, the old the OTI definition, it just it needs to support all kinds of PM or, or basic or the raw fault definitions. Then in the user space, uh, I think the community can have the uh, flexibility to support different kinds of rules or applications. So I think the key point is the, the OTI definition. So right now the, the definition is uh, I think 50% uh, follow the open config definition. I think this is a common uh, rules or common definitions for the community, for the, for the industry. So um, I think, uh, I think uh, right now, I think that we'd better um, review these definitions. I think the PM or the alarm, I think right now is not the key point we can, uh, because you, if you, if everything is in the Redis database, I think it's very flexible for the uh, for the user space application to handle different uh, business logic. So, hey, hey wait, I have one question. I, so, if I'm understanding you correctly, um, are you saying then that based on our definition of mandatory versus optional, are you saying everything in OTA you would consider optional at this point, or would you say that anything that's in the open config northbound API is mandatory and everything else is optional? How would you categorize the current API in terms of mandatory versus optional? So, um, so right now in OTA, only the, I think the, the line card, the, the top element is mandatory. So, but the other, uh, oh, but the other ones, the other sub, sub components is, is not. So it depends on the, the requirement from the loss band. So if the loss band or the, the, uh, the SDN controller need this information, then you'd better this device, you have to implement it. But actually it's, uh, it's very flexible. So yeah, so, so I think what you're talking about is more uh, the subcomponent building block. I'm taking it one level lower, which is, okay, let's focus in on a subcomponent, right? You mm -hmm. have an object that defines that and a whole set of attributes, you know, read, read, write attributes, right? Mm -hmm. um, even in that definition, would do you consider everything that's in there optional or do you consider some of those things to be mandatory based on the fact that open config defines it? What's your rule, right? In terms of, I understand what you're saying is, you know, yeah, with every piece of hardware, you're gonna plug in each of these subcomponents, right? Dep depending on what piece of hardware you're actually trying to realize, right? In the Sonic uh, system. But when you take one step further, actual functions of that subcomponent, right? What do you consider mandatory versus optional? The attribute uh, attribute within the object. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. That's my question, right? Is because I, I we see a lot we see lots of attributes and every, mm -hmm. ev in every one of these subcomponents, which is which is great, right? Mm -hmm. We have a good starting point, right? That we can start from. The question is, you know, do we need to pare yeah. that down, right? Do we need to mm -hmm. create kind of kind of a kind of a real kind of a streamlined uh, you know baseline, right? That doesn't have anything extra because I think otherwise I think we're gonna run into the issue Jimmy talked about last week at the end of the call, which or last meeting at the end of the call, which was once this gets locked down, it's gonna be very hard to change. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, so that that was that was that was my question more. It wasn't it wasn't about the subcomponents. It was more about once you drill down into a subcomponent, right? What is mandatory and what's optional, right? In each of those objects. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I think uh, it's a uh... It's a requirement from the, the SDN controller. So, so you know, for example, the inventory information for some uh, optical component is uh, is mandatory. So, for for example, for for uh, for VOE for uh, for, uh, for uh, amplify the gain, the output pulse. So these attributes are, are mandatory uh, because uh, because I I believe all the SDN controller need this information, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, I think uh, we, the community can make a design or, or, or un, uh, distinguish which attributes are, are mandatory, but uh, from our side, so I think everything can be optional. If, uh, if, if the, the vendor uh, OTA implementation um, return supported or return the correct value, then the, the data is in the database. So then we can support that. So if the vendor return not support, then we don't retrieve this data or we don't set this data. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, 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 what, so what I'm understanding then is you basically consider everything optional then, right? Because 
you are leaving it fully flexible, right? To say, um, you know, that, um, yeah, because, you know, I'll, make you know, your I'll, own I'll, pizza. I'll, I'll, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah make your own pizza exactly no because i'll give you an example right what if i have a fixed gain amplifier right so, that you, you you know as a piece of hardware right that i want to deploy right in mm -hmm. in which case then configuring the gain is not the supported parameter right because it cannot be configured it's fixed to a certain value right um so things like that right even things that we might consider to be mandatorily needed might change right if a piece of hardware gets deployed that might that decides that this is just a fixed gain, you know, because some cheap amplifier somebody's deploying, right? That so, so uh, yeah, so so I think these are because there are uh, some difference from between different uh, devices. Mm -hmm, exactly. So in this case, because you know in Sonic there are platform or different kinds of uh, devices. So in this case, if it's a fixed gain, then in the device uh, layer, you should read. You, you should, uh, um, so for example, in the CLI, then you can see that, oh, you want to set a, a gain, but the, the amplifier is a fixed, a fixed gain, then you should return errors at that layer. Uh, so, and also, um, yeah. I, I'm not sure if I answered the question. No, I think, I think wait, wait, you're, you're talking about more of an implementation perspective saying that there is a fixed gain and I return an error from the CLA perspective, right? That's what you're saying, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so for, I'm, I'm, I think, I think what Anup was alluding to is like it's something uh, he's thinking about uh, like the commonality, right? How do we basically define? Okay, this is a mandatory. How do we define this is optional? How do we define this is custom, right? I think, in my opinion, um, right, as a community, I think all the vendors, right, we basically come to a conclusion as to it's not just one vendor saying this is the way it is to be or something like that. Right? We just come to a conclusion and say, okay, these are the list of uh, parameters or list of features and things like that. And we go from there. So that would be easier for us to do rather than just saying, okay, in, uh, uh, giving an example of what uh, Anup said, if it's a fixed uh, gain, how do you basically say, we, we can't just say, okay, we didn't, it was not implemented in the original one and we give an error, right? So, so we probably have to come to a conclusion as a community giving the list and then everybody agrees to that, right? So that way, then it's easier for us to move forward is what I think, in my opinion. So, so is there anybody though that uh, how how the Sonic handle this? Because I, I saw how the Sonic, uh, the 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 the, the, the Sai handle this uh, uh, mandatory or optional field. Mm -hmm. so I think yeah. in that stack they said they they support that, but uh, in the definition, as I know, I, I didn't see that. Right, no, no, no. But the Sonic Sai is basically a completely different community. It's not part of the uh, the LinkedIn uh, Sonic. Uh, it's part. It's part of OCP. So they will. Oh, it's part of Open Compute Project. And I think. I mean, they. they it's been run by Broadcom, the uh, Cisco's, and uh, Juniper, and everybody. Right. They all contribute. So they are also the way they do it is basically anything which needs to be extended or any any api which needs to be done right they basically uh, discuss and then they bring up the commonality and then whatever is optional probably the extension extensibility will be added later right so that's how it is mm -hmm. so 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 i in my as i said right in my opinion i think uh, we probably have to uh, anup can correct me we probably have to just figure out and conclude right okay these are the apis these are the the base uh, or the standardized things which needs to be there um, and then you could do extensibility and customization on top of it, right? Give uh, so that it will be easier for us to go, go forward, right? Anu? Yeah, 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 no, yeah. So, so specifically talking about Utai, right? That you know, that's right. an exercise that right. I was wondering whether we should, you know, as a collective, should go through, right? Which is yeah, yeah. taking taking what uh, Wei Tang has proposed, which is great. It's a yeah. great starting point, right? I, I'm right. glad that we have that. Exactly. And yeah. Let's let's start going through that, and I think Jimmy alluded to this last week too. Let's let's go through that. And let's start paring it down, right, to the bare mm -hmm. minimum we need to support an OTN platform. And I think Wei Tang, you alluded to okay, every piece of hardware needs inventory. Well, that's a obvious, right? That's mandatory. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can agree on whether all the fields that are there is everything we need or we need more, right? We can discuss that, mm -hmm. right? But you know, so there are certain things we're going to look and say, yeah, this is obvious, right? We need this, right? Now, if you have a pluggable, we might say, okay, the laser 
you know, enabling a laser, right? That may be something, or the laser state might, you know, might be something that is required, right? Because every pluggable should have a, you know, you know, every, every transceiver should have a laser, for example, right? So things like that, we might just say, look, these these are basic things that every piece of hardware needs to have. If it's of this type, if it's this type of hardware, we need this function, right? Everybody should support it, right? And then we'll say, okay, these other things, these are optional, right? You know. Um, um, you know, I'll, I, an example of that would be, I think, in the line card uh, object, I think, Wei Tang, you have something, for example, that says, I think it's an action uh, dealing with upgrades, right? Um, where you have an uh, action that says, pause the commit of an upgrade, right? I think that's one of the APIs. I think it's in the line card, but I don't remember exactly. But, um, but, no, but that pause function may be something not every vendor, you know, would care to support, right? Because that's very specialized, and not everything might even have line cards. Yeah, yeah, right? not everything, yeah exactly. Right. So, uh, so you know, so there are things like that. We would say, okay, these are purely optional, right? You know, so you know, vendor can choose to support it, not support it. Doesn't really matter, right? As long as they return the right return code, uh, we tank, like you said, right, saying not supported, everything should still continue to work, right? So, I think from an O-type perspective, I think that's I think the next step in my mind, and you know, I want to get you guys' feedback on it. Is I think we as a collective should go through that and. You know, uh, let our feelings known, right? What is absolutely required for a kind of a kind of a bare bones OTN system, and what is optional, right? And you know, and then maybe we we kind of draw the line there for the OTI API, right? For the uh, and kind of go from there. So and, and now that's a separate track from the kind of the application layer, right? Because uh, we have multiple things we're trying to juggle in parallel, right? Which is uh, the OTI definition as well as the Sonic application layer, right? The user space applications, right? So that's a Kind of a separate discussion altogether. Yeah. No, so I have a, a suggestion uh, how to moving forward on the old time. Okay. So uh, as uh, we ten mentioned, right? So fifty percent they are from open config, right? So I think whatever more this than, uh, this 80. will be the uh? yeah probably more like eighty eighty percent. <laughs> 80%, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this 80% or whatever you open config, let's have a sort of guideline, not to arbitrarily say this will be that, right? So let's say uh, everything you open config, we should be in the old time, right? Otherwise, they, they they run the northbound interface, I mean, your model, then you don't support the underneath. That's mm -hmm. not good, right? Open. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good starting point, Jimmy. Right. I think yeah. we can use that as kind of our initial criteria, right? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. To determine, yeah, uh, you know, is this, uh, you know, maybe that's the, our initial cutoff line, right? and then we can mm -hmm. re refine mm -hmm. further, right? But I think exactly. That's, yeah, yeah exactly. I, th I think you're right. I think I think that's a good way to do it because we, since we are kind of tied to open config at the northbound, at, at least mm -hmm. at point, anyway, yeah, at yeah, this point, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. I think it makes sense to maybe use that as our basis, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and then you, you know, you use that as the criteria for you know drawing the line, right, of what's um, yeah, required yeah. versus not, right? So this will be kind of not a subjective. It's it's a more objective, whatever. Yeah, yeah you exactly. Can figure we do, right? So yeah. no. But, so even, this is like a but are we level on the mm. same page with even open config though? Because I know there's, you know, there's many vendors who have their own open config, uh, parts of their own open config. Right? Yeah, Denny, that's a whole separate discussion also, right? Because, yeah. you know, <laughs> because uh, open config certainly doesn't have full support for everything, right? Every OTN box supports. Yeah. Yeah, There's yeah, lots yeah. of augments to the models, right? That vendors do. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. how do we deal with that whole thing in you mm. know, this whole Sonic? We haven't even discussed that yet, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but that, that that's why I'm kind of yet. very much like, yeah. what's the part of it that we will net, like we think we can all benefit from? Right. 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 Yeah. The so I think the so I think what the team uh, the Alibaba team did, and I think this was the right right call, right, which was um, used open config as a starting point. Mm -hmm. Right. And say, okay, whatever open config supports, let's kind of consider that kind of, you know, for now, let's kind of kind of consider that basic capability, mm -hmm. right? For that type of OTN device, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then, you know, we, I, it's, it's, it's a good place to start, right? I, yeah. know, I don't know that yeah. that would be the final definition, right? But at least it's a, then at least we're not starting in a vacuum, right? We have some basis for, uh, it's not arbitrary, like Jimmy said, right? There's some basis for, um, you, know, uh, you know, what we're deciding is uh, what we think should be kind of basic capability versus, um, you know, what, you know, may be optional or not even supported, right? By certain Yeah. Members. So we at least uh, not to have to look at everything. I mean, this is all agreed at the top level, right? Mm -hmm. So we have like one chunk done. So yep. sort of yep. open exactly. config. Right, I yeah. agree. I agree. That's yeah. a good way to. That's a good way to um, mm -hmm. attack this. I think initially, right? Yeah. Just to get kind of that pair down list, and we'll see 
we'll see how big that is, right? Because yeah, we might exactly. look at that and go, we might <laughs> yeah. look at that and go, wait, guys, this is not even basic, right? This is, uh, mm -hmm. yep, exactly. you, know, you know, you know, that may not meet the, our ultimate goal of kind of creating kind of a bare bones OTN thing, right? That then others can build upon, right? If we yeah, agree that yeah. that's kind of our, you know, yeah. our, our direction marching forward, right? Yeah. Then second the angle is more look at uh, in the current old, old time, we saw that, right? So there's uh, many attributes. They, they are already supported in the original Sonic, like inventory of this, not in the side API, but on the other side of the system, which is a, a Sonic platform, like a Python subclass that side. So we need to make a decision whether we should move this out, right? Mm -hmm. The generic hardware is nothing to do with the ob uh, optical. It's like uh, uh, version software reset, upgrade, reset. So it is both applicable to switch and the router and as well as a Sonic, just as a generic network device. You always need these. Yeah. These, the Sonic tradition is they are not included in the SI. SI is a pure traffic service, but all these generic hardware, they are on the uh, Sonic platform right. side. So we, yep. I, in my mind, I think we should have moved to that part too. Yeah, and I thought Jimmy, we already agreed on. I think we agreed mm -hmm. on that a couple of meetings ago, right? If I'm not yeah, wrong, yeah, right? yes. I think we agreed on that. I think we, tang, if I'm correct, me if I'm wrong, but I thought we all came to the mm. agreement, right, that we were going to move all the kind of the stuff that the platform, platform. side has already defined in Sonic, right? That we were not exactly. reinvent mm -hmm. the wheel there, right? Mm -hmm. I think there was only one question. I think uh, somebody on uh, might have been on the Ace Link side. I don't remember person's name, but I had it brought up about how to deal with optical subcomponents. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether the current Sonic platform side uh, support, you know, deals with that about you know, uh, they, they have, and they have, they have and all like that. that. If it does great, right. And then mm -hmm. you know, we can certainly mm -hmm. leverage that, but uh, yeah. that was one, I, my memory serves me right. That was one comment uh, someone from the Eastling team had brought up. Yeah, uh, it's really a lot, only the way of this, defined like a okay, chassis, perfect. line card, and the component, component. right? Yeah, so, yeah, then perfect. Yeah, 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 perfect. Uh -huh. Then, then yeah. I think we're covered, right? Because that, we are, we're covered. If, effectively, mm. that's basically the optical system as well, right? Sure, sure. Same, same right. as the router. Try, yeah. to, mm -hmm. try, try to do as much, try to reuse existing code as much as possible, leverage on it, and... Uh, um, extend only is what we should be trying to do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, it, and it keeps the APIs clean, right? Because then right. Exactly, the tie yeah. becomes exactly what SAI is, which is a traffic configuration right. monitoring API, right? And nothing yeah. else, yeah. right? And, and it's easy, easy to merge back as well when you want to push yeah. back to something, right? So you, yeah. you want too many issues as well. Yeah, that's great. So with these two things, like uh, follow open config and uh, don't invent, uh, reinvent a wheel, whatever already supported by Sonic, I mean, pretty much we will be very close to how we, we know how to, to kind of uh, finalize our OTI. Right. Right. These yeah, are part of the guidelines. Yeah, yeah I, think that, part, I think that'll I, give us a version one of our OTI, I think. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah, and defined based on the open config, right? Is uh, the, yeah. the the baseline of the of the standard? Are, right? oh, there. Yeah, when I looked at this, it was it will need less than what the base Sonic needs, right? Because mm -hmm. there is a lot of uh, switch specific things that we won't even necessarily need for yeah. potentially for optical. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, so so that's uh, so that that was where the whole um, application layer discussion was going, uh, mm -hmm. Denny. Which was, and I think uh, I think Jimmy and uh, Wei Tang alluded to it, right? So we're we're kind of in a kind of a fork in the road, right, in that discussion, right? And we need to make a decision. Which is, uh, there's one school of thought that says create our own distinct OTN containers, right? OTN services, right? Separate from SWSS and SyncD, and deploy that um, in in OTN devices. I think we were calling it OLSS and o uh, OLS, OTC, yeah. OTC, yeah. OLS, OLS yeah. Sync, yeah, I can remember. Uh, and I, but I don't I think like there was the a... OLS name. <laughs> the OLS, I think I yeah, just names right names from... doesn't matter. We can, <laughs> can call everyone's everyone, confused. Right? Yeah, uh, but then the, the, I, I call it second... as OT, OT, uh, oh, OT Sync D or something. Yeah, yeah sorry, OT I apologize. Sync. I don't remember all the names. Yeah. Uh, but but then there was a second school of thought that said, hey, maybe we take the existing SWSS from um, Sonic and the existing SyncD from Sonic, and then we add the OTN functionality to it to it as kind of separate modules, 
or running within those containers and then and what would be that or what would it do this the the module sorry you mentioned um, well, so the, basically then what you would be running is the existing SWSS and SyncD containers from Sonic. It just would have OTN capability along with all the packet functionality. And what would that be? What The uh, problem the problem with that is you are actually making changes to the existing switching infrastructure and going back and merging. So we basically need to get a green signal, first of all, from the Sonic community. And second thing is going back and merging we might have to do a lot of testing with respect to switching as well and making sure that nothing is broken from there. So anything you make here, you need to be very cognizant of what is, but uh, if you're breaking anything, right? right, but, right? But, I'm sorry, my question was more like, what was the specific, like optical specific OTN thing? Like what would that be doing? Oh, all, all that it's oh. doing, I mean, all that would be doing at this point would be just translating open config into Redis <laughs> and okay. the other way around right. because there's really no dynamic protocols or active protocols other than right. uh, uh, you know um, um, you know uh, th th that, it, that you know that exists today right um, so it it's really just becomes a for the most part a translator layer other than the FM and PM functions I talked about right um, you know where maybe you have to do some you know extra you know work around binning and uh, you know alarm correlation and all that right who knows right but other than that yeah it's really just a uh, open config to Redis yeah. translation Shins thing Shins. right mm -hmm. translation thing right so the so the one school of thought is take SWSS plug in these OTN things there when you and then I think uh, Jimmy if I'm not mistaken uh, since this was your proposal uh, it's option. It, it it's compiled out when you deploy a true switch device, right? So it doesn't even get compiled mm -hmm. in in that situation. Mm -hmm. But on the optical side, Jimmy, if I'm not mistaken, both of them would be compiled in, but not mm -hmm. the switch not the run. when we started. When we yeah. started, right? Not the normal. Run. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think so. I think mm -hmm. from a kind of a overall architecture perspective, right? I think that is kind of the fundamental decision that has to be made. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Is are we going to reuse SWSS and add logic to that or yeah. Yeah. Are we going to create our own standalone set of containers? Container. Right? So mm -hmm. Containers, maybe, right? Maybe if we decide we want to even break it up even further, right? Yeah. We're going to create our own set of containers so that we're kind of not impacting as for each set, we're not mm. impacting so, uh, the SWSS and we don't have to do a lot of regression and all that, right? When we check in and all that, right? So, no. so I think, so that is, again, it doesn't change anything in terms of overall Sonic architecture. We're still... Mm -hmm leveraging all that, the whole Redis based infrastructure, the same CLI, right? Yeah. All of that is exactly the same. It's a matter of which service container, mm. right? That you're spinning up yeah. in order to uh, deploy on an OTN device, right? That's really the fundamental question that- Yeah. Um, and that, I would add on, as you mentioned, right? So uh, optical, like OTN is really just uh, like translate from the northbound open config all the way to ASIC DB, right? We don't have really much business logic to to do that. So uh, existing Sonic infrastructure can be leveraged fully without adding too much, almost zero business logic, I think. So just from configure DB to app DB to think ASIC DB, all this infrastructure uh, it's already there. So we just uh, like attach to that and make it happen. So all that really matters is really the sync D vendor side, uh, vendor OTI implementation, right? So yeah. all the above they are it's like a pipe. Yeah, a lot of it is I think just stripping. Stripping. Uh, stripping. Yeah. And, and, so, and I like that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, so see, right, right now, right now I think it's a pipe, but uh mm. can see the the future. So, for example, the uh, the the gain equalization or alarm or the PM, I think these are the yeah uh, exactly. The three features. Mm -hmm. I think PM consider. and alarm, those are like as uh, the next steps, right? I think mm -hmm. then gain equalization is uh, highly dependent on um, you know platform, right? Yes. So those kind of application we can do do like a two ways whether you can sort of gain equalization will write to the app DB directly, or you can even call the REST API, right? Yeah, I think so, the game, so, mm -hmm. sorry, I interrupted mm -hmm. you, Jimmy, but I see mm -hmm. things like that, like gain mm -hmm. equalization or like these other, these other processes or these other uh, jobs that might be triggered. They would be, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
perhaps like have its own container or its own process that yes. it could do these things that it would just interface with like op interface with the Redis database or because mm -hmm. you know all of the things you would need to trigger equalization like setting uh, the VOA, EDFA, whatever, uh, all of that you will have access to via the Redis DB and mm -hmm. then you can do it however you want in your container there. Mm -hmm. And we can also say, hey, we came up with like, we now you could say, okay, we Alibaba or we Microsoft, we agreed that there is like the our favorite way to do gain equalization and here it is, right? And it's generic mm -hmm. enough and we can now publish it, right? Maybe mm -hmm. we'll get there one day, but if we have it separate, then you can we can easily add it or remove it um, as we need be. Right. Yeah, I fully agree with that, Danny. And I think that's where I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's that was the original Ali proposal as well, right? There was a separate container to deal with the uh, control loops, I think it was yeah. called, right? Um, if I'm not mistaken, Wei Tang, I think that's what you guys had proposed, right? I um, can't remember the name of that container, but um, uh, but yeah, I fully agree with that because every you know even vendors might have their own power control, gain control functions, right? Mm -hmm. That they want to deploy for their layer zero devices, right? Um, that are you know are, are not driven by an SDN controller in the true uh, open config in a world, right? Even though we're using the open config API, I don't think it's a requirement that it has to be driven by an SDN controller, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, so I think things like that in my mind, so my, my big point is right that I don't think we should try to create this monolith called OLSS. Yeah. Maybe that's where we start, right? Kind yeah. of as kind of a basic function, but I think we should resist the temptation to, dump everything into OLSS, right? Because that makes uh, the this whole notion of creating a bare minimum device, right? Much, much harder to do, right? And if somebody needs to customize, uh, provide a different implementation and things like that, it makes it much harder to do that um, if this is all intertwined together in one big monolith service, right? Um, yeah, I agree. So all the intelligence kind of control should be we can have a separate container. Yeah, again, mm -hmm. that's, you know, mm -hmm. but again, I, I don't, do, are we there on day one? Probably not, right? Yeah, but, yeah. I think, you know, <laughs> uh, the, but that, that's my long, longer term view, right? This is yeah. where, where I'm thinking about where this should be evolving to. Right? And mm -hmm. I think I really like the ability and I think eventually we will agree even on those, but th those will require more in-depth conversations and more technical conversations. And we can definitely start with all the, all the stuff that, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the, this list of components that I think we're um, are more ubiquitous, right? Not mm -hmm. contentious. So I think, and we're coming close to an end. So I think the main action item I think about is like, okay, which are the list of ones that we think we can uh, all agree on in terms of prioritization of which, you know, uh, stripping the base Sonic and which ones we think we'll be able to reuse and 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 then kind of prioritizing this is anyone willing to volunteer to take to have a first go at it yeah yeah i can i yeah. I, I can do that mm. okay so, but the, we already danny uh we already have sort of a diagram to uh mm -hmm. have like which one we will keep and which one we probably will replace okay yeah, so yeah, that's why we have there, the so. so you have yeah. the list already. So maybe yeah. the action item is just mm -hmm. sharing the list and saying, sure. Hey, do we agree yeah. on these being the base? Right. Yeah. yeah. And then we can say yes, no, yes, no. And then next meeting we'll know, yep, we all agreed on okay. on these. Yeah, right. on the on the container base that I can make a table, yeah. for example, this keep this modify, this add, right? So something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That work can be done. Then second thing I can take a first step of, uh, to sort of modify the existing uh, OTI spec based on the two sort of guidelines. One is the open config. One is don't reinvent a wheel to kind of shrink down the scope a little bit. I don't know if you guys agree. These two. What, say that last part. Uh, last part is uh, existing OTI uh, attribute that's uh, already covered by Sonic, existing Sonic. They are not right. uh, traffic uh, related, it's an independent uh, generic hardware management. 
Yeah, like Re remove three. the duplicate APIs, basically. Yeah, exactly. Right. Remove exactly. the duplicate. If anything, anything is already defined in Basonic, you know, on the platform side, don't. Uh, yeah, do it on the platform side. Yeah, remove yeah, it yeah. from the OTI side because it really mm -hmm. doesn't belong in the OTI side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you if you look at the side, everything is traffic functional related, not to hardware management related, right? So. Yeah, so Jimmy, that makes sense. I think that's a mm. good, good way to start, and let's just see where that leads us right and let's see yeah. we get a manageable mm -hmm. that's much smaller otai, smaller yeah you know, uh, otai spec right that we can wrap our heads around mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah so i can uh, do so, that yeah uh, i will send you an, an, an excel which is include all the definitions then you can then we can aid yes or no something like that yeah Mm. Yeah, and Jimmy, maybe use just use email then to just like you know if you take a first stab at it, just email it to. I think we have a email group, right? That yeah, yeah. We've been sending yes, stuff yes. to just send it to that, and we can make our own edits and stuff as well if we find sure, something. Sure, sure, sure. We can. So, what the kind of format you want to kind of uh, uh, we put in the feedback? We will just uh, uh, we can certainly change the markdown file, right? The spec, and uh, have a pull request. Or you want to have uh, uh, the header file change. Maybe header file uh, later, just to work on the spec, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. OK, OK, OK. So I will mm -hmm. just uh, uh, sort of just uh, make a commit on the spec, then we review it. Yeah. A nice thing about the markdown file, it's like you can see the diff, right? Not yeah. the word the document, so <laughs> it will be hard, yeah. <laughs> mm. Wait, what are you trying to say about our company? Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bad joke. <I> just... <laughs> <Okay>. uh, oh, <laughs> so, sorry about that. Sorry about the Danny where you're from. Okay. <laughs> no, you're I, I, I don't have I, I I don't have a non respect for the word. I use it every day. Every time. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm using it right now. <laughs> I actually love Markdown more. It's kind of simpler. Yeah, it's for yeah. the get a worker get a will, right? You can even make a mm -hmm. comment yeah. on the diff, like all oh, this kind of thing. Yeah, and it's simpler. I don't no. need a menu. You know, I can yeah, just exactly. use codes. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. GitHub is a Microsoft too. So. That's true. <laughs> Markdown's used for lots of stuff. <laughs> yeah. No. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, thanks all. Thanks for being patient with me as I'm catching up. Um, this okay. So uh, talk uh, next week. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank everyone. you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.